Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. JCF again under fire for mandatory vaccination plan. Mixed views from stakeholders over government's COVID-19 measures. And later in sports, Brenna Williams aims to break yet again the national 100-meter junior record. I'm Giovanni Dennis and here are the details. The Jamaica Constabulary Force is again in the spotlight over mandatory vaccination. It's understood that applicants to the National Police College who refuse to be vaccinated against the coronavirus are not allowed in the program. O'Shane Masters has the details. You cannot move forward without being vaccinated. The position being taken by the National Police College to new recruits. In a copy of a letter obtained by TVJ News, the applicant who passed the first phase of the program has been barred from moving forward. The letter explained that it requires face-to-face -face training and because of the applicant's reluctance to being vaccinated, he won't be included given the physical training is the only option at this time. Chairman of the Police Federation, Corporal Rohan James, is livid with the decision. He says while the Police Federation does not have permit over the hiring of members, the measure is a retrograde step. He says it is concerning, especially since the JCF is desperately in need of boosting its police complement. We know that this has widespread implications and we do intend to engage the Police Services Commission given what it is that we have seen on the horizon. And 2020 vision, in hindsight, it is something that we must see around the corner, look ahead and know what the implications are for national security. And we will be making strident representation in that respect. But for president of the Jamaica Civil Service Association, JCSA O'Neill Grant, given that the individual was not previously employed to the JCF, the organization was well within its right. We can't object to an employer saying that persons who want to become part of our team must demonstrate that they are vaccinated. The person now has a choice whether or not they go and get vaccinated or they say that I cannot, con I cannot accept that condition and so I will refuse or I cannot um, put myself forward as a candidate um, because of that, that requirement. In the United States, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission recently gave employers the green light to require staff to be vaccinated against the coronavirus. They can also legally provide incentives, including cash, to workers who get inoculated. But for Jamaica, that would have to come through legislation. It is a very tricky situation. We, we do understand the need for public health and to preserve the existing labor force so that they are not adversely exposed to things like the COVID-19 virus. But there is also the right issue and the, the, the ability of persons to choose, the right to choose. And what we are trying to do is to not have organizations infringe on that right. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. Now in response, head of the JCF Corporate Communications Unit, Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay, says the individual has not been denied entry to the Jamaica Constabulary Force. However, she says, priority is being given to individuals who have been vaccinated to participate in physical training. SSP Lindsay says the stance taken was due to a number of outbreaks at the facility in the early onset of the pandemic, which hindered training. With the COVID-19 measures set to expire, there are mixed views on how the government should proceed. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is expected to announce updated measures in Parliament on Tuesday. But stakeholders appear to be divided on whether the current measures should remain in place. Kalisha Williams reports. In recent weeks, the country has seen a decline in the number of COVID-19 infections. However, the death toll remained high. Notwithstanding, there's a call for Prime Minister Andrew Holness to ease the current restrictions. It's something Mr. Holness said he would consider if the infection rate declined. A promise President of the Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association, Richard Pandoi, is hoping the Prime Minister delivers. You know, I think the environment is set for relaxation in terms of the hours of curfew, for example. So we're hoping to see... Um, a reduction in, well, an increase in the hours available. 
for work and for commerce um, during the week, possibly moving from 8 to 9, 9 to 10 there about. Certainly on the, on the Saturday, I think a little bit more than an hour. But we're expecting, based on the results and based on how the Prime, Prime Minister set the stage, to have some relaxation of measures. That view is also shared by head of the private sector organization of Jamaica, Keith Duncan. We do believe some relaxing of the measures would be reasonable as the current measures impose significant restrictions on the economy and economic activities, and they were designed to take us down from the previous spike. So the current measures have achieved the objective, and therefore it may be appropriate to relax them somewhat. But for President of the Medical Associations of Jamaica, Dr. Andrew Manning, relaxing the current measures at this time could cause more harm than good. We have to be very careful. We should be guided by the uh, international and multinational health bodies, and they have stated achieve a positivity rate of less than 5% for about two weeks before we ease restrictions. The measures which have caused contention in recent months include the gathering limit for weddings and burials. The calls are also getting louder for the resumption of entertainment events. Kalisha Williams, TVJ News. Still on COVID-19, 90 new cases of the virus were confirmed on Sunday. The country's overall case count is now 48,557. The country's COVID-19 positivity rate now stands at 13.3%. The death toll is now 948. Three additional deaths were recorded on Sunday, one each from Kingston and St. Andrew, Portland and St. Mary. Their ages range from 62 to 92 years. In the meantime, 160 persons are hospitalized with the respiratory illness. 11 are critically ill. There are 21,939 active cases. A probe has been launched into the circumstances surrounding the death of a man at the JCF traffic headquarters in Kingston. The body of an unidentified man was found hanging on a staircase at the back of the facility early this morning. His identity has not yet been ascertained. And it's now time for a break here on the Midday News, but please stay with us. We'll have much more when we return. Welcome back. We're continuing the news. Ahead of the start of the hurricane season on Tuesday, the St. Anne Municipal Corporation is facing criticisms over its failure to conduct regular drain cleaning. O'Shane Masters has the details. It's a stinky situation near the St. Anne's Bay Transport Centre. When we come and eat in our food, because of the drain, many of us upset. I'm even myself upset we have to move because the drain is very stink. We cannot stand the stinkiness of the drain. In fact, this is the case throughout the town centre in Sentence Bay. The reason? Uncleaned drains. Residents complain that the Sentence Municipal Corporation has done a poor job at keeping the drains clean. They argue that with the start of a 2021 hurricane season less than 24 hours away, this should have been done weeks ago. If the drains are not clean, then the place is going to break and stink. We need to clean the gym now, but we can be happy. It's hurricane season, we are coming up too. So I hope and trust what we are hearing, what we are saying as a people. I'm not talking for myself alone, you know. We are talking for all the taxi men and people who come around. We they need to clean the gym and clean it now. When contacted, Sentence Bay Mayor Sidney Stewart explained that councillors from the 16 divisions in the parish have been given money to clean the respective drains. The cash was recently disbursed, so the work should begin soon. Now, there are some of these drains that we are going to be, be, be ensuring that we put in place a maintenance program for, particularly the ones in Ultras and St. Bartley. These are large drains. He admitted that the municipal corporation could do better to maintain the drains, but explained it's challenging. It's a very expensive exercise. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot to clean those drains, especially when they don't get the attention gradually and immediately. We clean it this time. In St. Albany, we're going to ensure that we put a team in place to do day-to-day -day maintenance, weekly maintenance, 
in those drains so that we don't have to be doing comprehensive work again, you know, except the events of a disaster. Oshane Masters, TVJ News. Meanwhile, Minority Leader in the St. Anne Municipal Corporation, Councillor Winston Brown, is rejecting claims by the Mayor that funds have been allocated to councillors to conduct drain cleaning. We, we generally put our road maintenance funds together during the month of April and May to do drain cleaning to mitigate against flooding. And to date, we have not received that fund yet so that we can commence any drain cleaning to mitigate against flooding. So if people that are concerned, for now we are now approaching the hurricane season, which will be tomorrow, it is the 1st of June, and the residents are very concerned about flooding in the area. Mr. Brown, who represents the Borough Bridge Division, pointed to drains in dire need of attention in the area. As you know that Cable is a flood-prone area. Uh, we, we, did, we did clean that sinkhole sometime in December, but we received an extra rain that sinkhole partially black again. 